Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a very quick ad cover using Windows Forms. WinForms is for old people. Old? So that's how we're going to play. Alright, sorry about that. I made that video a long time ago. I just wanted to reuse it. Okay, now I'm going to just click on any tech article. I'm not trying to pick any company or website out, but they're pretty much all the same whenever I try to read an article. Yeah, like this one, you know, little videos start popping up, ads, you know, I'm trying to read. And let's, I wanted to show you how I got rid of that by built this little thing called Ad Cover. And now if I go back, I can sit here and read and they can show me all the ads they want and I don't see it, which is over here on the right hand side, which is fine. I'm just close this site down. I'm going to go ahead and go over to Visual Studio. I was just trying to show you what we're building before I start building it. So I'm going to create a new Windows Forms app. You can use .NET Core or .NET Framework. I'm going to use .NET Framework just because that's what I've been using forever. But you can use either one. You know, for this, it's going to be they're exactly the same. Now that the Windows, now that the .NET Core designer works. So I'm going to just click on. Uh, I have a GitHub folder, and I'm going to just call this Add Cover. And I'll just go ahead and create. And it doesn't matter which version of .NET Core or .NET Framework. Well, .NET Core might matter, but I'm just using .NET Frameworks. Okay, so this is my uh, Windows form. I'm gonna go ahead and just click a real, uh, rename it to mainform.csharp. You don't have to do that, but I just kinda like it to be. And next thing I want to do, I want to click on my little properties window. So I'm gonna hit F4. I want to go up here to the top and select back color and change it. Click on the web tab and go to black. Now the next thing I want to do is go back down to the bottom and we want to go to startup position and we're going to change that to manual and we want to change topmost to true. That is the key to this, uh, how you make this application as kind of a cover. Now obviously two apps, if they both have topmost, that will be a conflict, but you know we're just going to run one, so it'll be okay. So the next thing I want to do, I'm going to show you something, and this is just to be a very quick tangent, but I have an open source project. If you ever wanted to learn how to uh, modify C Sharp code on your own, this is called Regionizer. You don't have to install this, but I'll put the link in the description in case you do. But one thing I like about it, once you set up your comment dictionary, I hit my mouse over this and hit control shift and it will fill that in for me, the comment. And I'm going to go ahead and write a method here. I'm going to type INIT, ah, Visual Studio filled in the rest. I typed init. Okay, now I'm going to hit control shift again and that comment was also typed in for me. You didn't have to do that, but it's just, I was just showing you. It saves me a lot of time because I like to write comments, so a lot of comments, I, uh, it uses regular expressions to determine which comment to show. And I'll, I've been meaning to make a new video on that. Let me know if you want to see it. It'll expedite it. Okay, public void init. We're going to create our method. Now here's something. This is why I use Regionizer, even though everybody in the universe hates it. Clicked on Format Document, and now our document is formatted into a methods region. Now I do have a bug here where it typed the word method, but I haven't bothered to fix that. Now here what I want to do is just type in in our init method. Just to show you, if you're not familiar with Windows Forms, I'm just going to run this. Whenever you run an application, the first thing that gets executed, like our, our, our class is called main form, so the constructor is just the name of the class. That's the first thing that gets executed. So I'm not even going to step into either of these because we don't, that's just the initialized component just creates your controls and we don't have any. It will set the back color and that kind of stuff. What we're going to do is just go to this init method. And what I'm going to do here is create a rectangle. And I'm going to just call this screen size. And that's going to equal screen dot from control and type in this for this con referring to this form or this control or whatever class you're in dot bounds. And that'll give us the rectangle. I'll just put a comma here. Okay, if I could type this morning. All right, next I want to put, put uh, position the control. So we'll say this dot left equals screen size dot width minus this dot width. And I'm going to just add about 16 because usually I see a little bit of a gap. 
her there. Okay, next I want to put this dot uh, top equals screen size. Oh, so I'm top, I'm just going to put it negative 16, sorry. Now I'm going to put this dot height equals screen size dot height, and I'm going to add about 32 just to fill all the way down the control. So now if I run this application, we're just going to see hit F5 to run it. Let's see if that work did work. Now that's a little bigger than I want. So I want to set the width to be a little smaller. I could do it here, but I could just as easily do it in the designer. So I'll just something like that, whatever size you think you need. You can always position it. I'll just run it again and show you. You don't have to get it perfect because if you come over here, you can grab it and size it based on whatever website you're on. And I used to have one I had a long time ago that had like another one at the bottom kind of down here, but I'm not going to bother with that for this. You can build your own if you want. Okay, so that's all we're going to show. The last two things we're going to do is build an icon and create a shortcut. Or not build an icon, set an icon and create a shortcut. So I'm just going to select my form. I'm going to go up here to icon. And you can use any icon you want. I'm going to just select this one I have in one of my other projects. And then I'm going to also go to, if I uh, go to Solution Explorer, go to right click on your property, I mean on your project, and go to Properties and click Browse. And I am going to uh, select that same one. I'll go to GitHub Data Juggler.net and select the same icon. So now I'm going to build this application. Okay, I'm going to close everything so we don't really need them open. And I'm going to, if you click, click on up here in the little uh, Solution Explorer, Show All Files, right click on Bin, Debug, and select Open Folder in File Explorer. That will get us a shortcut. And I am going to say Send to Desktop Create Shortcut. So now if I go to my desktop and I look over here, I should find it. I'm going to just rename this to Add Cover. Okay, and now if I run this, so now anytime you want to go to an article, you know, I can click on that and make it whatever size I need. You know, you can adjust that application. That's all I'm going to show in this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about our video ideas. You know, I, I, I learned how to code about 25 years ago and we didn't have the, well, we had the internet, but we didn't really have ways like, you know, YouTube and 100 Days of Code and I mean there were sites Stack Overflow wasn't around but there were some other sites kind of like it but nothing like we have today so just let me know what you want to learn you know it's a lot of things I know I learned a long time ago and they're not applicable but you know um, just so anyway thanks for watching and you know let me know if you like this little program because I I get tired of seeing ads and I feel sorry for these companies that see it but it gets really annoyed watching it all right have a great day